Hi, welcome to Tech Talk, the technique of DJing. This is DJ Perdicion, and today is the day we're going to be looking at the Serato program on my MacBook, the software, and I'm going to be giving you a tour and as well as doing a little mixing of how the program works, how we uh, transition from one record to another and some of my techniques and secrets with that. Uh, we don't have a console. I don't have a console at the moment. Um, I had some issues with, with loss last September, but what we're going to do is I'm speaking to the manager of the guitar store at the moment. So hopefully next week I'll be able to go in and do a half hour to one hour lesson with you with their console there and uh, my speaker so that we can have a full on uh, mixing lesson so that I can teach you about boost monitoring because I have a speaker although I have a speaker and I have the computer we can't really do queuing and we can't do boost monitoring which is a very are very very important parts of DJing but what I can do is again teach you about the basics of the controllers how things work uh, the basics of mixing, some of the preferences that you may like, and just you know, show you around the things that I know. I don't know everything about how this program works. I've been using it about five years, but um, I'll show you some things about my library, some things that I like to do, and just give you some basic aspects of the things that you can do, even without being able to boost monitor and to cue. Um, queuing is a big, is a big, is an important aspect uh, up there with programming. So I'm going to flip the camera around and uh, let's get started. So, this is Serato. Okay, I hope we all have a good view of Serato. Okay. Um, this is the Pro program. I highly recommend the Pro program because without it, you can't um, you can't upload things. You can't save your mixes. Um, this is very appropriate for me right now. <laughs> you look at this track. Can't get a man. Can't get a job. And then the track is "Life's a Bitch." Okay. Um, where shall we start? Well, if you look over here, look at my, my mouse. Um, this is deck one. And then this is deck two, which would be like your turntable one and your turntable two. These are wave patterns or wave formations for deck one and these are wave patterns for deck two these are like when you would look at a piece of vinyl and it lets you know what's going on when i played vinyl records i like to look at the vinyl it would you could tell a lot of the times where the breaks are what's coming up um see here's the colors they let you know where the drops are i i don't really know what the different colors mean i know red means bass but you can see um you know where the drops are drops meaning where nothing's happening um just let you know where um your music is intensifying where is it where is it uh you know, where, where the different colors correspond with different sounds of your music as it goes along. Um, I'm not gonna get into settings. This is your crossfader. So see how I have, it, I have it all the way over to the left? It's better when I'm playing music for you to just have it all the way over to the left for this song or this track because then I have all the all the sound and power over to the left, but um, then in the middle, the 
if I had two tracks playing at the same time, it would be playing both tracks equally. And then all the way over here, I would just be playing the track on the right. Okay. Here's your basic EQ for your left track, your left deck, low, meaning bass, mid, meaning that's where your vocals are in your mid range. Most of your vocals lie there and your high, meaning your treble or your tss, 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 you know, your, uh, your brights, the bright aspect of your song. Filter, I'll get to that later. Same thing over here. Okay. Now here is where your library is. If I go to all over here. Okay. That's my, that's where all my library is. See, you can see over here. Just going down, 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 down. That's my library. Now, different people like to set up their display differently. Oh, and we'll look at, see, here's your record. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna turn. Here's your slider. Oh, by the way, on this, you don't have what are called rotary pots. New mixers don't really have them for um, MP3s. Although, and I'm still learning how to do this, they do have rotary pot mixers like the old Yuri mixer, the Bozak mixer, and even Rain mixer. Um, but you'll basically be working with slider mixers. You know? But I've learned to enjoy this. This is like no sound. This is like maximum sound on your left deck. This is again no sound, maximum sound. But you also have your crossfader. So you have two sources of how you want to control your sound you want to bring your sound over a little bit here you know what you want to, you don't want it as high here this is more subtle an adjustment of sound this makes the sound change a lot faster you know this is more of a this is more of a um Makes the sound go louder a lot quicker, a lot quicker, a lot quicker. Here, this makes the sound go louder a lot quicker, 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 a lot quicker. So you can you can sculpt your sound a little bit more here. Okay. And you know, this makes the sound sound louder quicker here when you do it over here and this is kind of like a more of a sculpting of your sound so that's important to know uh here oh step back to where it was this these are like set levels i don't really mess with them too much they should be set by the system so that's your like that's your master for this channel this right here and this is your master for your house um, just right here. I don't, that's always kept it here. I don't mess with default levels. You could really like bust your system. That's your master, that's your master out volume right here. Master out for your system. It's your master out or your level for your, each of your uh, decks. Ah, and here's pitch control, like you know the Technis 1200s? Right here is zero. Also has plus or minus eight. That's minus eight percent pitch control over here. And you can see it over here too. Pitch control. All right. Now I'm sure even if you're new, if you're not new, if you're becoming new, if you wish you weren't new, da 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 da, the sync button, the controversial sync button. Next subject, sync. 
is, well, something I don't use a lot. Um, sync is a story. I don't know if I want to go there right now. I think that's something that has a lot to do with a lot. Um, the short story is, is that sync will help you if you are, um, almost, if, if, you know, this is 131.7, and then let's say you match this up to, um, what is this, 131.7, and you match this up to 131, uh, 0.7. Oops. 131. Uh, so small, I can't even say. 7. And you went to play them and it still wasn't quite matching. You could hit sync to like, you know, snap them both into the same beat. Um, that's the simple version of it. But sync is not assured, it's not a guarantee, it's not always appropriate, and sync changes the sound of your music too. Um, these are hot cue positions, these plus signs. Hot cues are a lot of things. Most people say hot cues are, let's say that you like this track, but you like to mix in here and you want to remember that. That's the part where you'd like to start mixing. So you can like make a little note of that here. So that whenever you put this record on, this part's gonna appear. So even though this record starts here, at the very beginning, this is like where the beginning of this record starts. When you drag this up from your from your list of, of songs, it's gonna start there. I also use hot cues as reminders of outros, meaning, let's say I like to always remember to mix out here, or I, when, when this hot cue is coming up, I want to remember that that's the part where I like to mix out. So you can use a hot cue, obviously, <laughs> when you see this hot cue, it's not where you mix in, so it's going to be a signal to you, that's where that hot cue is, where I like to mix out. Um, Uh, I don't want to get too specific yet. Now, these are interesting. I like these crates. Since you don't have, you have crates of music. These are categories. So, you see how I have my different categories? I have, um, hard house, tech house, chant, high energy, tribal, hard techno, um, bitch tracks, some of the tracks that I reviewed with you last week, last episode, um, you can make a crate. So all you do is you just push the orange one plus crate, you just overwrite it, okay, and just delete it out and put, um, uh, Let's say, um, uh, uh, let's say you have a gig, so you put Thursday's gig at, Thursday's gig, just put Thursday's, we'll just put Thursday's gig. So what you would do is, you go back to all, because that's where all your collection is. And you just go to take tracks. Now when you drag, like you take tracks and you just would drag them into, oops, where my Thursday's gig go? Make sure Thursday's gig is exposed. And you just drag tracks into that folder. Like I want to use this one at Thursday's gig. I want to use this one as Thursday's gig. Now, we're, now, and then when you click on the Thursday's gig folder, there they are. They don't move from 
your main list of all your records to the Thursday Escape folder, they just are copied there. So they're still in your main library. They're just copied there. Um, so you'll just have a new, uh, and you can delete the folders anytime by pushing control, delete. Um, let's see, what are some other things that I can tell you about Toronto? I don't want to get too specific yet, like problem solving and things like that. But I do, um, I do want to, um, do some other activities with you, but for now, we're going to take a break and, uh, pick it up in just a moment. So this is only 16 minutes so far. But I think it's a good time to stop or pause. I'm not actually sure if I can pause these videos because this one I'm doing for my phone and the computer you're seeing, obviously I'm filming the computer with Serato. But take a break right now. And if it can't resume from a pause position, then my continuation, this will be part one of learning Serato, and then you'll simply uh, go to the next movie for a continuation of Introduction to Serato 1.